How are we doing? Everybody doing well? It's been a while. I've almost been in a state of depression. <laughs> not being able to see y'all. So, hope everybody's doing good. Well, I think the most important thing about the first day of practice is um, that everybody can come off the field and self-assess where they are, what they did well, things they need to improve on. Um, I think it's important that they walk on the field and make a decision uh, that it's important that they get better and they have goals um, every day. Otherwise, they're going to stay the same. And I think if they have no goal, they'll, they'll certainly find somebody around here that'll accommodate them and teach them and help them get better. And that's certainly the goal of spring practice. Um, I think everybody's got to decide the player that they want to be uh, and go out there and work hard uh, to do it. And most of the time, it's not the other team that's a problem. It's you defeat yourself from within. You know, something within makes you not finish the play, makes you quit on the play before uh, you should, makes you um, back down from the challenge sometimes, makes you get frustrated when you make a mistake. Uh, these are all things that psychologically, to be a great competitor, you have to overcome so you can persevere and improve and play the next play and uh, learn from your mistakes. So um, every great team that we've had around here has had a lot of a lot of chemistry, um, you know, a lot of guys that buy into the principles and values of the organization and the standard and the way we do things. We also had really good leadership uh, to set a good example uh, for what those things were all about and uh, didn't tolerate it when people, you know, didn't do it that way. So um, I think that is something that's a work in progress um, with every team. Uh, it's a new team. So. Um, the leadership, the togetherness, the positive energy, people being responsible for their own self-determination so they can go out there and do their job with some kind of consistency and performance is you know, why we're starting to practice and why we need all these practices in the spring and all the practices in the fall. So um, we just got to work, keep working and be patient with the players that we have so that uh, we can get better. Um, we did have a good off-season program. I was very pleased with that. And I think, you know, the energy and intensity that the players went out there with today was, was good for the first day. Um, you know, I think some of you might have some questions about um, why spring practice is a little later. I think it's twofold. I think spring break was very early. Um, so um, we had sort of a late finish in the season. Um, we had some guys that needed some time to be able to heal up to be able to practice. Uh, so rather than having a split spring practice and starting early, uh, then having spring break, we just decided to wait till after spring break, which gave us the opportunity on the other end not to have a day on Easter weekend, which I've never liked to do. Uh, we usually don't practice on Saturday of Easter weekend, so players can go home and be with their family, uh, and we're not asking people to come to the A day game on a holiday. So um, those those are kind of a, a combination of things. Um, Four players that I know you're probably interested in. You know, Jared Maiden uh, had a hip injury from last season um, that required surgery. So he's going to be limited throughout the spring and probably be able to, and to uh, participate very little, but should have a full recovery. Sean Dion Hamilton, as you all know, had an ACL in the SEC championship game. Uh, so he's doing some things. He is dry land running, but uh, probably will also be limited throughout the spring, but also anticipate a, a full recover, recovery. B.J. Emmons and Bo Scarborough are both guys that are doing individual drills and are able to do uh, some things uh, and probably will make progress throughout the spring and uh, probably be able to go in a short period of time. So uh, they're all doing very well, and I don't think we have any issues with that. We've got three new coaches on the staff, and... Um, all of them have worked for us before, so they kind of know what to expect. Um, and, you know, Brian's done a really good job and worked really hard uh, with the coaches that we have to uh, make some changes in the offense, but also try to keep the things that we do well uh, and that Jalen can do well and maybe that our young quarterbacks can do well, which is going to be important for us. And, you know, Mike Loxley was with us last year and is a very good coach, so I feel good about the staff that we have. And Joe Panunzio is going to has been here before and will do a good job as well. So uh, we got a lot of good players to replace, uh, nothing unusual. 
So it creates a lot of opportunity for a lot of guys, and we'll see how they respond to it and see how much progress we can make throughout the spring. Hey, Coach. Um, watching the secondary today, you do have experience coming back, but also a lot of young guys back there. And if I could ask about a couple of them, one um, is Deontay Thompson, and then the other, Traylon Diggs, was working there today. And is that just the usual, we're going to look at different guys, different places in the spring? Yeah, that's an experiment that you know we wanted to go through and um, see. Look, it's twofold. A, we can see what he can do. He can learn a position. If we had issues later on from a depth standpoint, uh, the guy would know enough to be able to go over and be an emergency player and play both ways if he was playing offense later on. So this is the time to sort of try to do that. Uh, that's number one. Um, Deontay Thompson has made improvement every year. Um, and hopefully, he'll continue to make progress and be able to make a contribution. Uh, the way we worked out there today is Minka and Anthony were the corners. and. Uh, Tony Brown's playing corner and star. Um, so we have two freshman safeties, really three freshman safeties that are all mid-year guys, so they're all working in there as well. Um, Ronnie is back. Hootie played a significant amount last year, after, especially after Eddie got hurt. So we do have some experience, but uh, I think that um, it's going to take a while for us to sort of see which combinations of guys in regular nickel and dime work best for us. Uh, given how the uh, national championship game transpired with the time of possession deficit, how much was you know returning kind of to that ball control mentality of emphasis, uh, even in hiring uh, Brian as the offensive there, coordinator? There, there was nothing. You know, we we didn't block them. We didn't execute very well. Uh, we we didn't throw the ball accurately when we had open people, and a couple times we dropped it. So. Uh, I think it was more a lack of execution than it was something schematically that we were doing. Um, and that's on us as coaches. That's not to blame anybody, but you know, us for not having the players you know, more well prepared. And um, you know, the defense also needs to get their self off the field you know, on third down so that they don't have to play as many plays. So it's a combination of things. But uh, I do think that we could have executed a lot better uh, in that particular game. And I think most players would probably tell you that on both sides of the ball, not to take anything away from Clemson, but um, it is what it is. But as we always do, we're going to self-assess uh, what we did through quality control, um, what we did well, what we need to improve on, visit people, try to get better at the things we need to do better. And um, But I, I don't, philosophically, we're not, I don't know where you came up with, we're going to go to ball control. That's not what we do. I mean, New England Patriots threw the ball over 60-some percent of the time, which is more than we threw it. So where does that assumption come from? Or do you do what everybody else in the media does, just create some shit and throw it on the wall and see what sticks, which is what I see happening everywhere. And the people who scream the loudest, you know, they kind of get the attention. And we pass some rule right, that everybody has to live with that, or some law. And the consequences mess up a lot of other things. Do it all the time. We're doing it right now. The NCAA is doing it. We're going to change the way we can have summer camps. We can't have high school coaches working summer camps. I mean, it's the most ridiculous things that I've ever seen. But it is what it is. And whatever they do, they do. Um, so we say we don't want third parties dealing with players. Um, so we're not going to let the high school coach bring a guy to camp. But some third party guy can bring him to camp now. It makes no sense at all. I mean, but all the people who have common sense, they won't say anything about it. But the people who scream the loudest will get the thing changed, and it'll mess everything up. It's the way it goes. The way it goes in the world, politics, just the way it goes. Same thing with you. We're going to be more conservative now in ball control offense. Where'd that come from? I never said that. Nobody in this building ever said that. So where'd you come up with that? Just, you know, had a dream about it or what? If we'd have caught some passes in the national championship game, we had guys open, we, we wouldn't have had to control the ball. We'd have scored more touchdowns. Uh, you mentioned how this isn't his first stint here, but what does Joe Panunzio bring to the staff as an on-field assistant? Well, you know, Joe being in pro ball, I think he helped with special teams a lot in Philadelphia. So when we interviewed him, he had a very good knowledge. He did it before at Miami uh, and was very good at it. Um, so he was working on the field there as an assistant. Um, 
um, sort of an assistant to an assistant. So uh, I think his energy and enthusiasm will be really important on special teams, and I think he's a good teacher, and I think it's going to help some of our young players uh, who probably need to be core special teams guys for us. I think one of the things that hurt us last year, you know, we lost six guys through the course of the season. We had six guys transfer last year, then we lost six guys for injury for the year. Uh, and I think those things affected us at the end of the year, probably more on special teams than any place else because it made some players play too many plays uh, and it affected the quality of um, how I think we played on special teams. Ideally, what are you looking for in, in right guard and uh, who are some players to, that are competing for that position? Uh, Les Cotton's played it today. Um, I, I, you guys, we don't have a depth chart right now, okay? We have a rep chart, right? So it's an organizational chart for repetitions. I know you all don't get that concept, all right? But I say it every year, all right? But um, he played there. Um, you know, we, we've got, we're going to try to get the best five offensive linemen. I can't really tell you after one day practice, you know, who's doing great at offensive line. It's hard to evaluate those guys in the offseason program. There's nobody that struggles more in the offseason program than the big guys. It's good for them, but, you know, the skill guys look great doing it. The big guys don't look so good. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how those guys do now that we're practicing football and they're playing in a short area. But, um, you know, we're hopeful that um, we think we have enough center and guard types. Uh, we need some guys to be able to come through and play tackle for us. Yeah, just for the first time in a few years, you have a starting quarterback returning. Uh, how has that dynamic changed this spring? Is it better uh, to have some experience back there, but some true freshmen? Well, you know, we, we, we have one year of experience, all of our quarterbacks combined. So that's more of a dynamic than having a starting quarterback back. Um, I think that um, because we do have a starting quarterback coming back, we, it's easier for us to self-assess um, what we need to do for him, with him, to help him, to coach him, uh, so that he can develop in areas that um, would be helpful to him becoming even a more of a complete player, uh, mostly in the passing game. So. Uh, that's something that we're going to work hard on in the spring and also in the fall. Um, so if he could do that and be sort of a dual threat guy, that uh, I think it would be really, really difficult for defenses to defend him. So, and then the other two guys who are freshmen, um, you know, we're going to have to. They're going to have to grow into being adequate backups by the fall. So this is the least amount of experience we've ever had at quarterback, regardless of having a starter back, um, but. I like all the guys. I like their attitude, and I think they, they both, they all three have a lot of potential to really be good players. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Mika playing some corner today. What is it about his skill set that let him sort of change within positions like that within the same year and in the same offseason? Well, we'd rather not have to change him from one place to the other, but uh, last year, based on some of the things that happened, you know, we had to do it. Um, so, you know, he's played star, he's played safety and started games, and he's also played, played some corner for us. And uh, he's played all three of those positions very well. So uh, it's nice to have a guy like that, that if somebody came through as a starting corner, he could play someplace else. If somebody came through as uh, a really good safety, then you could feel comfortable leaving him at corner. Uh, so uh, it's really unique to have a guy that's as smart as he is, has as good an understanding of the game, that really can play all those positions. Uh, yeah, I want to go back to the when you were talking about the psychology of a team. When when a season ends like the way last year did, do you do anything different, or is it just try to get back to business as normal as, as fast as possible? Well, it's like I said after last year's game. I mean, one game doesn't define who you are. Um, you know, we won 14 games last year and played a really good team in the championship game and um, probably didn't finish the game like we'd like. Uh, I don't think anybody's happy about that. But, um, you know, I think that the challenge was and the message to everybody in this building uh, that works in football was uh, this is not a time to talk about we. This is a time to talk about what I, what I can do better uh, to help us be a better team. I don't care whether it's me. I don't care what your role is here. 
Uh, I don't care if you're in recruiting. I don't care if you're in uh, operations. I don't care if you're a coach on the field or if you're a GA or an intern. All right, what can I do better to make our team better? Um, and that, that, that's the message to everybody here, and that's what we've tried to do in the offseason. That's what we're going to try to continue to do in the spring. I know it's day one, but how, uh, what's your concern level? Or, or you know, how, how do you assess this defensive line? Because, you know, we Jonathan Allen's not there. We haven't had pads on yet. We haven't hit anybody yet. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think Isaiah Bugs can good, be a good play. Uh, Deshaun Hand has been a good player for us. Um, Deron has played, Deron Payne has played a lot of football around here for two years and been a good player for us. Uh, Raekwon played some last year. Uh, Quentin Williams is going to have to play some. Um, you know, Josh Fraser played, you know, quite a bit last year. Uh, we got a couple other freshmen coming in. I mean, they all need to get better and they all need to improve. But um, we played with worse. And we, we, we don't look. I don't compare anything to anything. I mean, we could have said when. Dante Hightower and Rolando McLean were the two inside backers, and they left. We're going to compare them to the next guys. Well, I mean, that's not fair to the next guys. All right? And it's not fair to compare these guys to who we had last year or who we had the year before. Uh, they have to develop an identity of their own uh, as a unit and, in, as, and individually, and we're going to work hard to help them do that. Thank you. Thank you.